Aloha, I'm Jack Dugan, and this is Hawaii Tourism Now, where we talk with various business leaders and government officials here in Hawaii to learn their insights and ideas about Hawaii's tourism industry. Today we have CEO of Hawaiian Airlines, Mr. Peter Ingram. Peter is going to walk us through some of his thoughts and ideas about what he sees today and what he projects for the future in our tourism industry here in Hawaii. Thank you so much, Mr. Peter Ingram, for joining us today. Uh, we'll get right into it with a few questions. Can you describe on the high level how Hawaiian Airlines has been impacted and what your operations currently look like today? Yeah, well, th first of all, thank you for having me. It's, um, it has really been incredible how, um, how the situation has affected us and there's there's really not any part of our business um, that hasn't been touched by um, the spread of COVID-19. Um, it was a couple of months ago now when we first started seeing the impacts mainly on some of our Asia routes and, and uh, as the disease was spreading from China to places like South Korea and Japan, we saw declines in demand in that part of our business. and. I, I think at that point we were thinking of the, that the situation was a lot like um, SARS a, a decade or two ago when um, there was an epidemic that stuck mainly to Asia and I don't think we really anticipated how comprehensively it would affect us but by the end of uh, by the end of March um, we were uh, effectively uh, our revenue generating capability as a business was shut down. Demand had already been affected, but with the quarantine going into effect, there's really no passenger um, demand for our flights. We are still operating uh, daily flights to Los Angeles and San Francisco, mainly carrying cargo. And we've got uh, four round trips uh, from Honolulu to each of uh, Maui, Kona, uh, Lahue and Hilo, and uh, and and that's basically it right now. Last week we started three times a week flying to Korea for cargo only, and we're going to start a Seattle flight that again is going to be mainly for cargo. But really, the passenger side of the business, ninety percent of our, our revenue is uh, is gone right now. So our operations are a shell of what we would normally have. It's incredible. Thank you. So as the CEO of a, a great magnificent, large Hawaii corporation, how do you bring some semblance of calm and uh, just understanding in such a turbulent time to your customers and, and also your staff? Yeah, it, one of the things I would say, you know, maybe the most important one is, is we've, we've got to keep communicating to, um, to people. Uh, and that, that is, you know, goes for our guests and for uh, the members of our team. Uh, it's, it's something um, you hear all the time, but until you're in a situation like this, you, you really come to realize um, there's no such thing as, as communicating too much. And so with our team, um, we, as Things were changing very rapidly in the business as we were scaling back our operations, as we were having to adjust our policies and procedures. Uh, what we were doing is um, sending a lot of communications using the web, but the most effective thing I think we've done is webcasts where uh, I make myself available for an hour or two at a time. We take questions online. Um, we, we do these periodically in the past and we had had a maximum of about 400 people signing up for any particular session. Uh, in one of the ones we had over 2,400 people connected. So about a third of our company um, connected at the same time. And when you see the hundreds of questions coming in, it just reminds you that no, you can't communicate um, too much. There's a lot of things people want to know because this does affect their lives. As far as our guests, and we obviously, it's difficult when you have, uh, you have 12 million guests a year travel with you as we do, or as we used to be able to do, uh, we hope to be able to do again. Um, we can't communicate in that same way, uh, but we've sent a number of communications out addressing concerns that people have. How does this 
affect the travel plans that they have? What accommodations are we making to, uh, to help them rebook their trips? Um, what are we going to do for um, people who aren't getting to use um, the elite benefits they've learned on our uh, frequent flyer program? Uh, what are we doing to make sure that our planes are clean and safe and dis disinfected? All of those things that people want to know, we just want to make sure we're, we're working to get the information out so that people know uh, we're aware of their concerns, we're addressing the situation, and we're going to do our very best to make sure um, that we can live up to the values that are so important to, uh, to me and all of my teammates. Yeah, thank you. And so are there any actions on the state or county levels that, that you would like to see that you feel would be helpful for the Hawaii tourism industry as it clearly needs to rebuild? Well, I, you know, I, I think the, the most important action we need is, is we need to, um, to get the public health situation under control. And, and the good news is um, that we have been able to, um, to do that to, uh, to a large extent. As, as we sit here today, over the last couple of days, we've been in the very low single digits in terms of, of new cases that are arising in the state. Uh, we watch the evening news. We see um, people who had been in intensive care coming home um, uh, recovered from the hospital, which is gratifying to see. Um, so it's, it's great that we've made progress on that situation. Of course, we also see the headlines that we have uh, unemployment rates that are 37% and 200,000 people have lost their jobs. So the, the next step is how do we begin to recover our economy while at the same time not sacrificing the great progress we've made in terms of public health? And uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not a healthcare expert, but I, I certainly have learned a lot from uh, what I've heard from the experts in this situation. And a, a lot of it comes down to you know, what can be done in terms of uh, treatment if people are sick, testing so that if people have symptoms that before they, um, they give the disease to someone else, they get tested and they are, are appropriately able to, to quarantine themselves in that situation. Contact tracing so that um, people can, um, can let, people, let other people know um, who may have been in contact with someone who has the disease before they spread it. So all of those things that are really public health items are the building blocks we need in place to get to the point where we can feel comfortable opening up the economy, wel welcoming visitors um, back to Hawaii in numbers. And I think that is uh, what we need to do to address um, the unemployment situation, which, ha which has its own extremely negative consequences that get worse the longer it goes on. Right. Yeah, thank you. So once the, the government lockdowns are lifted and Hawaii tourism does begin to return, what timeline would you project from what you see and what you know as far as the pace at which uh, Hawaii tourism may return? Yeah, it, it, it's a great question and one that I don't have a perfect answer for. Um, you know, clearly um, we're not going to see a return of of visitors before quarantines are lifted. Um, but even, even as when we get to the point where quarantines are, are lifted, um, there's going to be a period of recovery. And, and I think it's going to be gradual and it could take a, a long time. And, and there's a couple of things that, that we know are just not going to go right back to normal. Um, one is, um, is the economy. And, you know, just as, as our economy has been damaged by this situation, the economies in other places we serve, where our visitors come from, whether it's um, the U.S. mainland, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, um, those economies have been hurt and um, spending power is not the same. So I think people have a desire uh, to come to Hawaii and spend vacations like they always have, but they may not have the economic capability right away to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the other one is just um, given the global 
healthcare crisis that, that we're dealing with, I think there is a lot of uncertainty that people will have for a period of time. Um, people feel like they've kept themselves safe um, by staying home and sheltering in place and um, breaking away from that and saying, you know, it's all right to go out again and to interact with people and to go to restaurants and to um, go to public places to get on an airplane. All of those things are uh, going to take a little time and people are going to go through that on an individual basis, how they get themselves comfortable to get back to, you know, what, what we used to call a normal life. So I think our new normal is, it will have a new normal, but I think it is going to be a little bit different and it's going to take a little time. Mm -hmm. And as it relates to Hawaiian Airlines, you know, indicators that, that you might see from your company that could give any type of, of, of obviously not a clear, accurate projection, like you said, but, but anything that you might uh, provide to our audience that might help give some insight or, or idea that information you have from your company. There's, there's really not a lot of indications right now. I mean, we, we look at uh, activity on our website and, and the pace at which people are making bookings. And really, um, it's too soon to say that, that that has done anything except flattened out at a very, very low level. Um, to In the last week or so, we have seen a little bit more activity of people thinking about um, trips and making bookings some months out. And uh, I, I'm hesitant to read too much into that because it's, it's really more of a short term uh, phenomenon. And because we do have um, relaxed waivers for the ability to change trips again, it's a bit of a low risk transaction. So someone can book something, but then they can push that trip off to next year or, or whenever. Um, so it, it's, it's a little early um, yet, I, I think as we start to see um, our Hawaii economy open up again, and as you start to see economies opening up in other places and shelter in place orders removed, I think that's really going to be when people start thinking about venturing out again, and we'll start to see what, um, what level it's at. It, w one of the things we've talked about is you really can't model what a recovery is going to look like because there's just too many uncertainties to um, to predict what that is right now. Um, so really what we're doing in terms of planning is as opposed to trying to model it and make a lot of assumptions that are just going to be wrong, we're just saying, well, let's look at some different scenarios and what those scenarios mean to our business going forward. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Thank you. And I think you kind of answered this in your, uh, when you were talking about the new norm, but in your opinion, when the Hawaii tourism does return, will it be business as usual? Um, no, I, I think there's going to be some things that are, um, that are different for sure. Um, you know, one, I think it is going to be, it's going to start out at a, a lower level. I don't think we're going to snap back to the same level of air service, the same level of demand. Uh, and I think all of us who are in various parts of the tourism industry are going to have to go and um, relook at parts of our business and say, you know, how do we need to adjust our practices um, for um, the reality? And the reality is we're going to be living with COVID-19 for a while. There's going to be a number of cases for a while. Uh, the experts say it's 12 to 18 months before there's a vaccine. So uh, assuming we want to get back to something more normal before that, and I would definitely be in that camp. I think we have to make adjustments, and you know, I'll, I'll give you one example: is what we're doing around um, the cleanliness and sanitation of our airplanes, which has always been a priority. Um, but when you start talking about uh, a virus like this that is um, is um, so infectious. Um, it really forced us to go back and redouble our efforts and say, you know, what's, what practices can we do to add an extra layer of safety? Um, we've gone and acquired a number of, they're called electrostatic fogging machines that actually spray a mist of uh, disinfectant 
through the cabin and we're gonna use that on our, air, our long haul airplanes after every flight and several times a day on our, our short haul airplanes to add to um, the cleaning that we've al already been doing. Um, today we're providing masks for um, guests if they don't have one. We're, we're strongly recommending that guests wear masks. Our, our frontline employees are wearing masks. Uh, I think very shortly um, we're liable to be um, requiring that when our guests come on the airplane, they wear masks for a period of time. Uh, I don't know how long um, that will last, but but based on the CDC recommendations right now, we think that that is the, the best course of action to, to do. So uh, a number of things are, are going to be different. And, um, you know, this has all happened very quickly for us. It's just six or eight weeks since we all started responding. I, I don't think we know all of those things yet, and we're, we're going to have to continue evolve, evolve, continue to evolve and continue to adjust to circumstances as they arise. Yeah, thank you. Do you expect there will be social distancing guidelines airlines must follow in the future? For example, you know, maybe not passengers sitting in every seat anymore. I've heard different things. I'm sure you have too. What, what do you see uh, to the best of your knowledge uh, moving forward in that regard? I, I think you're going to see some of that in the uh, in the short term. Um, we we are you know right now making adjustments or have been for several weeks making adjustments uh, at the gate and certainly we've got very low traffic on our airplanes right now, so it is easy to to relatively easy to move people around at the last minute. I think um, for the next little while we're probably going to be leaving. Uh, some seats on the airplane that that are not assigned in advance so that that there is a little bit of space in there um, what, one of the challenges for thinking about that for the long term is um, that it it really doesn't uh, doesn't work with the economic model of our business so you know we're typically running on long-haul flights 90 percent of our seats full and our overall profit margin last year and what was uh, a very good year and certainly a much better year than this one we made about a 10 percent margin um, so that means you you need to fill about 80 percent of the seats on the airplane just to break even and uh, if you were going to block middle seats for the long term and only two-thirds of the seats on the airplane are available um, that's a model where you'd have to charge a lot more money for every ticket. And that's a model where there's gonna be less demand and we're gonna see um, fewer people traveling. Uh, if we had to do that, uh, I guess we'd have to adjust, but I'm not sure everyone's gonna like those adjustments because it, it, it would mean that um, prices are higher and fewer people have access to travel. Yeah, uh, interesting. So when it comes to the local businesses here in Hawaii that are part of the Hawaii tourism industry, are there ways that, that they could be working together right now? I know, it, like you said, it's a little early to know when things are going to start picking back up, especially because the lockdowns and the quarantine specifically hasn't been lifted. What things could business leaders uh, be doing today to working together in an effort to begin rebuilding the industry? Yeah, I, I, I think we are doing things to work together. Um, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time uh, and other um, leaders from our team have spent time over the last several weeks talking with um, government leaders, community leaders, and other leaders in the industry to talk about what we need to do um, to create an environment, one, where we can remove the quarantines and start to, uh, to open up again, um, to make sure we've got um, the healthcare system in place to be able to support that and to make sure we're making the adjustments we, we need to make in our industry. So I, I think people are very committed to that and involved in those discussions. And uh, I, I think we all, we all want to, uh, to do it. You know, one, one thing I would say, I've talked about opening up the economy. I'm anxious about opening it up too soon as well. You, you know, opening it up too soon uh, when we don't have all the um, the protections in place to make sure that we can manage the healthcare impacts is going to be a mistake because we'll just have to close things down again. Um, opening it up too late 
and inflicting more damage on our economy and causing you know, more people to be unemployed longer is also a bad outcome. So I, I think we've all got to work together to try and find a solution that's somewhere in that sweet spot where we manage this situation as effectively as we can as a community. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear that you feel there's a lot of communication going on already, like you said, with business leaders and government officials. And so to be clear, your message to others in the business, whether they're a large uh, corporation or maybe a small um, you know, small business here in, the, in Hawaii in the tourism industry, communicating, talking with others, and, and, and just getting out there seems to be a good recommendation from your point of view. Yeah, I, I, I think that's absolutely right. And, you know, at a time where, um, where we're not all meeting in the same place, it's actually been great to have technology like we're using today where we can, uh, um, we can interact with one another and see one another uh, as opposed to just talking on other ends of a phone line. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Uh, lastly, is there anything that you'd like to just say on your own behalf or on behalf of Hawaiian Airlines to the community, to our audience, to those that are um, impacted um, by the, the collapse of the Hawaii tourism industry? Yeah, well, I, I guess I'd just like to say, um, you know, thank you to, uh, to everyone in our community for, for everything that people have done um, to be responsive to this situation and to, uh, to work to um, to flatten the curve of COVID-19 in our community. Uh, my heart goes out to, uh, to people, whether they work at Hawaiian Airlines or work elsewhere, who have been uh, affected by this, either because um, someone they know has, uh, has contracted the disease or they've been affected economically by this. And, and I would just say, you know, we're, we're going to get through this. Um, we have challenges all the time. Um, we should... Um, do our best to get through it together with the best interests of each other and our, our community and our hearts. And uh, I, I have a lot of confidence that, um, that we'll get through this and, and um, we'll be all right on the other side. I, I, I can't wait till that day comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can't we all? Thank you so much, Peter. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you for your time and your, your words of support and encouragement and your insights as well. We'll talk to you again soon.